Hunger is probably the number one obstacle when it comes to fasting. But heck, hunger is not the number one obstacle when it comes to losing weight. Let's change our mindset about hunger, guys, because I wasn't able to make this transformation without feeling a little hunger in the beginning. It's okay to feel hungry. My mindset around hunger is that my body's burning fat. That's what I think about it. We are so addicted to frequent eating that becoming a little hungry freaks people out. And it shouldn't. And it probably is freaking people up due to their blood sugar levels being high. And that's probably the main reason why. So you want to be able to fix that. Because if you have insatiable hunger, that is not going to help you lose weight and keep it off. Now, I'm going to go into why people struggle with hunger when it comes to fasting or why people struggle with crazy hunger in general. Because I know I struggle with binge eating and being hungry all the time. So if you're new here, welcome. My name is Dino Joy and I've lost over 110 pounds on my weight loss journey. I lost 113 pounds to be exact. I started my weight loss journey off at 282 pounds due to dealing with an injury I had postpartum, giving birth to my son. I couldn't move a lot. I was in a lot of chronic pain, got depressed. When I'm in pain, I get depressed and I eat, which brings me to my one meal a day transformation, also known as OMAD, just a form of time-restricted eating, guys. That's all it is. It's just instead of eating my calories throughout the day, I'm condensing it in a smaller eating window. And the reason why I do that, to help control my hunger, to help bring my blood sugar levels down, and to help with discipline and keep me in a calorie deficit. So there is my journey here. So why do people struggle with insatiable hunger? Number one, it's the foods you're eating and you're probably eating naked carbs. What do I mean by naked carbs? You're eating things like white bread on its own, maybe a piece of chocolate on its own, things that will spike your blood sugar immediately. And the reason why these things spike our blood sugar, because in nature, carbs are not found alone. Carbs are found with fiber. Carbs are filled with polyphenols, depending on what carb you're eating. So we have basically stripped carbohydrates of their beneficial products, the fiber and the polyphenols. And we have processed carbs. And these processed carbs pretty much bypass our body's ability to control hunger. Basically, what happens is with Carbs that are processed or foods that don't contain fat or protein, our body's satiety hormones are not able to come into play. This is why there is a major success with Ozempic. I have my opinions about Ozempic. I don't like Ozempic, but Ozempic basically targets a hunger hormone, a satiety hormone. So it's a hormone that tells us to stop eating, GLP-1. And The reason why we have to develop a hormone to tell us to stop eating is because the food we are eating is not bringing up satiety cues. So when you eat naked carbs, carbs that don't have fiber, basically what happens, our body is not told to stop eating. So when we eat foods with fiber, our stomach stretches out, right? We get full. So when we're full, our body releases a satiety hormone that tells us to stop eating. When we eat fats and protein, we produce two satiety hormones, peptide YY and cholecystokinin, and these hormones tell us to stop eating. Now, when we just eat naked carbs, we don't get those hormones. We can just eat more and more and more until we're full. And these refined carbs, if you're eating refined carbs until you're full, you're eating a lot of calories too. Because again, these carbs are not the same way they're found in nature. Now, carbs are not the enemy. It is the processed carbs that are the enemy that has completely kept our system out of whack. So going back to the topic at hand when it comes to crushing hunger while fasting, when you're fasting, you got to watch out for the foods you're eating when you're not fasting. So you should be eating foods that are high in fat, high in protein, and high in fiber. I lost the majority of my weight using keto. There's a reason why keto works because I'm eating foods that are high in fat and high in protein. So my satiety signals are on board and it crushes my hunger. When you produce ketones, it crushes your hunger. So when you're fasting and you're hungry, please do this. Number one, have your electrolytes first thing in the morning. That is key. Make sure you are having your electrolytes because it's going to make things easier. Now you have to realize when you're starting your journey with fasting, 
you're going to be hungry in the beginning, okay? You're going to go through a hunger period. But the benefits of going through the hunger period while intermittent fasting, as opposed to the benefits of going through the hunger period while eating throughout the day, is that it gets easier over time. Because when you eat throughout the day, you are producing a hormone known as insulin. Insulin is produced when food hits our mouth and insulin tells our body to store food as fat. Now, when you're intermittent fasting, you don't get that. So over time, you'll bypass that. I think it's much harder to lose weight by eating throughout the day than it is with fasting. That's my opinion personally. Some people believe it's easier to do it throughout the day to each their own. But for someone like me and a lot of you who've struggled with overeating, I think it's easier just to do it this way, whether it be like a 16 hour fast or 18 hour fast or longer. So that's number one. You want to make sure you get in your electrolytes because that's going to help crush your hunger and to keep you active and energetic. Number two, things you can have to crush your hunger. Please make sure you're drinking tons of water more than usual. Water is key. Drink your water. Of course, when you're intermittent fasting, whether it be OMAD or whatever, an extended fast, you need to drink water. And you should be drinking water with electrolytes and water without electrolytes. Another tip to help you crush your hunger while intermittent fasting is to go to sleep. (laughs) Take a nap. If you're struggling, just take a nap, go to sleep. And I promise you, when you wake up, it'll probably be closer to your ending your fast time. But number the but the number one thing that really helps to crush hunger is keep yourself busy. Like today, I was so busy. I accidentally did a 23 hour OMAD, almost a 24 hour OMAD. And this was me working out. I worked out around one o'clock PM and I finished my workout around 2:30 and I ate my meal at five and I ended my meal last night at six. So that was an accident because I was so busy. I just didn't have the time to eat. So keeping yourself busy is key. Another thing to help crush your appetite is that you can take supplements. So you can take supplements that have zero calories. I like to take my vitamins. I like to take my adaptogens like ashkawanda. I take rhodiella rosé. I take Siberian ginseng. I take my vitamin C. Um, I feel like taking the vitamin kind of maybe like tricks our body into thinking it's like, oh, it's getting some food. So if you have your vitamins in check, it can help your body like go through whatever like slight mineral processes that it goes through with the vitamins and stuff. That can help. Another thing that will help is sparkling water, key, hot water, hot teas. Teas are key. You can have black coffee. I don't like coffee because coffee just does something where it messes with the scale. And I believe that has something to do with either the gut microbiome, which is probably one of them, or the blood sugar, which is probably related to the gut microbiome. I know that coffee can spike the blood sugar in some people. Another good hack is getting some cayenne pepper and mixing it with lemon. Take a couple of squeezed lemons and take a couple of lemons and just squeeze them and have that with some cayenne pepper. A major hack is cinnamon tea. I like to have yerbe mate tea. It's a holly plant tea. That is a great tea as well. Now, things you don't want to have fasting. Do not have any artificial sweeteners that will spike your blood sugar. No stevia, no erythrol, no xylitol. Definitely no xylitol. Yuck. None of that. Don't have any of that. Um, In fact, when you have things with calories, because some people like to fast and have like a bit of a juice, it kind of makes your hunger stronger. I noticed that if you add in cream in your coffee, it makes hunger harder. So I think it is so important to fast clean because the more you do it, the easier it gets. And then you'll have a day like today where it's like, oh my God, it's been a full day and I haven't eaten yet. Like I have. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful. I kind of went on a tangent there, but if you made it this far into the video, just drop in a couple clock emojis and I'm sending you guys mad love. Take care. Bye. (laughs) Thank you.